Hello, this is the first in a series of videos about JavaScript events. What we mean by JavaScript events is using JavaScript to allow the user to interact with your web page. And this can include rewriting the contents of the web page or taking things from the web page and evaluating them, allowing the user to input something and so on. Now, to do this, there's usually two things involved. The one, the first, is an element on the page with which the user can interact. So this element might be a button, it might be a form field that they type into, uh, it might be an image that they mouse over or click on, it might be a block of text that when they click on it, it changes or something like that. Uh, it can also be scrolling. JavaScript can detect where you are on the page while you're scrolling and then cause events to happen because of where you are on the page. The other thing, I said there's two things involved. The other thing that's involved other than the element that the user interacts with is an action. So what is that action going to be? What is going to happen when the user interacts in that particular way. So what we've got here is a JS fiddle, and this is completed, but we're going to go through this step by step. But so you know what's going to happen, this is a very simple first example for beginners, is that when somebody clicks this button, so the element is the button, what happens is somebody clicks on it, and when they click, I'm about to click, this paragraph appears. Very, very simple. And clicking more doesn't cause anything else to happen. So I'm going to delete the JavaScript and go through it step by step. So here we are with no JavaScript. And the first thing I need to think about is what do I want to do? So I want the user to click on a button. That's the action I want. So in order to make the button, uh, to find the button with JavaScript, I'm going to use this little bit of code. And I could use what's after the equal sign by itself, but it's kind of long. So I like to take that long string of command and put it into a simple one word variable, such as button. And then I'm going to be able to use button in my JavaScript code, and it's easier, right? But what are we doing here? This is how we pinpoint or designate an element in the HTML. So let's look at our HTML. We have a button at the top, and we have a div that contains a paragraph. And when you look at the results pane in the lower right corner of JS Fiddle, you see that button and you see that paragraph of text, it's not hidden. And the CSS is basically nothing important. So back to the JavaScript. So now we've designated or uh, pinpointed that button that we want, right? It's the only button in the HTML, so we can just use its element name, its tag name. If there were more than one button, we'd have to somehow say this button. So we might give it an ID, or we might use its location on the page, but this is simple, only one button, so we'll just use its tag name. Then we put it inside a new variable button that could be any word, any string at all to make that variable. So now we've got a hold of the button, basically. Okay. So what do we want to happen? We want hidden text to appear when we click the button. So right now the text is not hidden. So before we can cause that div to appear, it has to be hidden, right? So it's not going to be on the blue section of the page here uh, until the button is clicked. So in order to hide that div, we're going to have to designate that div in the HTML and we're going to put that into another new variable. And again, I'm keeping this really, really simple because our page is simple. This is all that's on the page, right? So we select or pinpoint what are we going to use, and we use this, uh, this method query selector, 
And then within quotes, we put, in this case, the name of a tag. Now, if it were a class, um, we would use a dot inside the quotes. And if it were an ID, we would use the hash mark, the octothorpe, right? So uh, ID name, right? But it is neither an ID nor a class, so we're just going to use its tag name because it's the only div on the page, so this will work because of that. Okay, what did I do wrong? There we go. All right, so, and what's inside the parentheses has to be in quotes, no matter what it is. Double quotes are fine, single quotes are fine. Okay, so now we've designated the two parts of the page that are going to have some actions done with them, right? And we've given them short little variable names, so we've named them button and we've named them div, and that's what we're going to see in our JavaScript. So now we want JavaScript to listen for a click on the button. That's what initiates this action, right? So we know we want the user to click a button, and we have to write some code so that JavaScript is paying attention to that. And there's more than one way to write this, but a very, very simple way is like this, okay? So we have given our button this variable. So that's why we're using button, because it's the variable we chose. And dot on click is a method that makes JavaScript listen for that click to happen. Then after the equal sign, we need to have a function, just a regular JavaScript function that gives instructions what to do when the button is clicked. So whatever we want to happen, it has to come on the right-hand side of that equal sign in the form of a function, okay? Um, and it's not uh, equals like um, we're actually assigning a value to the onClick event. And so the function will be the value of that event, okay? Um, so let's see, how are we gonna write our function? Remember, we have to think, what do we want to do? We want to make a hidden element appear. Right now, the text isn't hidden yet. So first we're gonna have to hide it because the way we write the function depends on in what way was the element hidden? Was it, was it already on the page and it was hidden? Or are we spawning a new element from nothing, which we could also do, but we're not doing that because the element is already here on the page. So we're just gonna hide the element in a very simple way. And the element is a div, right? We've given it that special little variable, right? So we're gonna use that variable right here. And then to hide it, we're going to use a CSS style. We're going to use the display property equals, and then we write what value should the display property have in CSS to make this div be hidden. And that is display none. Okay, so hopefully you know enough CSS that you know that if we have display colon none over in the CSS, which we don't have, but we're writing it now with JavaScript. So the JavaScript is causing that div to have this property. And at this point, let me comment out this line for a moment so that we can run. And when we run in JS Fiddle, now the text is hidden, okay? So what caused this entire div to hide? This one line caused it to be hidden and it's using the variable div, which we set right here, okay? So you can't always use div. You would have to uh, declare a new variable with that name. Okay, so back to our function, we will uncomment the beginning of our function now, or the event listener, and now we have to write the function. So what can we write to make the div be hidden? Well, if you're thinking, if you know how the display property works, you know that the display property in CSS can have several values. And what we want to do is set it back to the default in this case. So the default display value of a div is block, and that's what we're going to do. But we can't just write that here because we need to write it as a function. So I'm going to choose the shortest possible way to write a JavaScript function. 
And it's not my favorite way because it's kind of weird, um, but it works well and it's short. So because it's a function, we'll have to put our commands in here, right? Or our instructions. So what instructions are we gonna put? Well, basically we're just gonna do the opposite of the hiding that we did. So we can just copy that, put it inside the function code block. And instead of none, we change it to block because block is the default display property of a div. And so changing from none to block is going to make that visible. So we will run that and click our button. And there it is. So this amount of code caused a thing to hide and a button when clicked to make that thing appear. And let's just do it one more time. We'll run it again in JS Fiddle. And so when you would load the page, it would look like this, nothing on it but a button. And you click the page and that div appears. Now, if you keep clicking it, nothing happens. We will cover having it hide and show in the next video.